¿Por qué aquí? ¿Por qué no? No quiero que te enfades. Estás en tu derecho de enfadarte. Es un riesgo que corre. Las solteras van a ir a más. Yo puedo arreglarte el tejado a cambio de que me dejes entrar en ti un rato. ¿Tú te crees con derecho a juzgar, pero no tienes ni idea de nada? Tú no me conoces. Tú no me conoces. Tú me conoces nada. No me conoces nada. To the 71st edition of the San Sebastian Film Festival. Today we're presenting the press conference that corresponds to the film Un Amor. And we have uh, the whole team of uh, the film which competes in the officials section. And we've got Sandra Armida and Marisa Fernandez Armentero, producers, Hugo Silva, actor, Luis Bermejo, actor, Laia Costa, actress, Isabel Coixet, director and uh, screenplay writer, Ovi Kuchkerian, actor, Ingrid Garcia Johnson, actress, Francesco Carril, actor, and myself. I'd like to commence, uh, raise your hand if you want to ask a question, but I want to start with a question. This question to Isabel. When I read Un Amor uh, by Sara Mesa, I remember how I liked how she plays with words, the author, that is the idea of translation and all of those issues. I remember talking about the difficulty of adapting this novel before knowing there was a project underway. And I was asking her, how was that process of adapting it, which at the end of the day is a translation of turning the text into another language, along with Laura Ferrero. Were there interesting uh, decisions were made? Could you talk a bit about this? Well, everyone says that, that is to say, Un Amor is a difficult film to adapt, uh, novel to adapt. No, it's a great novel, uh, Un Amor, and that's where the difficulty lies, to adapt it, because you start with something you like. And Laura, both of us, we admired Sara Mesa so much. Her novel is obviously at the origin, and thank you, Sara, thanks, you, thanks to you, we are here today. But... I don't feel that with Laura Ferrero, my co-screenplay writer, we didn't feel that it was something difficult. Above all, because when you've got something that it's very passionate about and from, from where there's a story that deserves to be told, I don't think anything is difficult. And from there, what was important for me, I would say there are two swords of Democles. Uh, what's Sarah going to think when she sees it? She's seen it, she liked it, I feel relieved. And secondly, what will the audience think, the readers who have had it? I've got the film of Un Amor in, the head, in, the, in their head, and that's where that Democles sword is, and we hope that it, it fits in, and that's my wish. Hi, congratulations for the film. My question is first for Isabel, because I've heard you classify it as a Western at a given moment, and I'd like to know what have been your film references, or whether there have been, in the process of in the writing of uh, the film and for the producers because I know the shoot wasn't easy and what were the handicaps that you had to overcome. I didn't say anything about a Western. I'm sorry. I feel a lot, I, I respect Westerns a lot, but perhaps there's an iconography where we shot, for example, on a location may remind you of something of the spaghetti Westerns, but beyond that, well, there were a lot of Indians. No, I'm down. No, I'm just joking. That's not true. <laughs> well, references. I think that Un Amor, the reference, and I've got to be uh, self-referential, it's a crossing, a crossroads between the secret life of words and the library uh, or the bookstore. There's an underlying world in our place in the world and how it sets this up, that's the idea. And a library or a, or a bookstore, but I think she means, because basically the same a person that comes to a place with the feeling of integrating and feeling good and everything goes wrong. 
And as regards to the shoot, the shoot was, a de, was, be, was excellent because we were in La Rioja and every day we got, uh, well, they brought us some sweets or bread on the first day. They made some bread, which is called Un Amor. We ate, we all got fat. I think the difficult thing in the film is that we shot it in five weeks and with very little money. And when you shoot with very little money is when you undergo these difficulties. But it snowed and Isaba said, well, okay, snow, hey, let's go ahead. She always said, let's go ahead when there's difficulties on the, on the horizon. If the wall falls down from the house, well, let's keep going forward. Let's integrate that fallen wall because it was one of those shoots where quite fortunately, the spirit of the team was so positive and so good that we ended up, a calzotada was organized with the people from La Rioja making their typical dish. This, that, but shooting with very little time and asking Isabel Guichet that we've only got five weeks to do it is not always easy, but quite fortunately she made it easy and she doesn't presume of being a heroine, and I think that's excellent. Hi. I'm over here. I've got a question for the last scene in the film, but there are teams that don't like, people don't like to talk about the end. Can I ask you about the last scene? I've got two interpretations. I don't know which one's correct, and this is the only opportunity I have that you've done, it, that I have, but you made the film. When the film fin finishes, we see the protagonist who finds her dog again and a dog that I thought had died already, so therefore, are they both escaping or are they both dead? I think you're right. <laughs> and I go back to these references, but I'm allowed to do this. In one of my films, there's a character who says, understand everything makes your mind lazy, and we don't want to lazy minds. Can we leave now? Hi, a question for Laia, Hector Garcia from Cameo. I'd like to ask you about your career because you worked a lot abroad in the last few years, but you've spent a couple of years working in Spain. Now that you've become a mother, do you want to continue to uh, well, go to Europe or go to the United States, or do you're more interested in working here like, with directors like Isabel? I don't know. Well, I don't think the actors in general have got so much power to decide of where and how and when we want to work, but I'm very thankful to Isabel because I was able to come to Spain with Free Love, which is a series, and that's where I met her, in a, a shoot and on set, and that's the main reason why I've worked again with her. Basically, she says, come, come along, and I leave everything and come along. She's got a way of working from enjoyment and from almost handicraft uh, directing, which can't be seen in a shoot of when you shoot a film. And my intention, I hope, I'll stay here with geniuses like this because I would never get tired or bored of working with people like her. Hi, congratulations for the film. And I'd like to ask, what's it been in a film like this to work with a figure like coordinator of intimacy, for example, which is occurring, an, an intimacy uh, coordinator, which is very important for a film like this for the, all the clue. Well, the intimacy uh, coordinator was Isabel Cruchet. It's a question for you, Isabel. We didn't have one. I think every director has got to find, and all actors have to find, their way of working. I know there are many directors. I don't know. I operate my films. Other directors don't do that. I think that we all find our way to doing things. In the case of intimacy, if there's a field that I know is that of intimacy, and obviously I told them, do you think, do we need this figure or not? They said no. And we had a conversation as, as adults. And I think that there's something that's, the, it's the duty of a director. And I repeat, if there are other directors that find that they don't feel comfortable with all of this, well, perhaps they should not write a sex scenes. But when I write a sex scene, I imagine I see it and I ask my actors to do 
to tell me as well the problems they've got and from there we set it up but in my case and I must say also that I've talked last year I remember I talked with Mia Hansen Love and she said what do you think about this intimacy coordinator well I don't need it in my case well no but if there are other directors that want it well they can go ahead but there's something that I'd like to say and that before and I'm sure you've got many questions I must say that my options for all of the actors that are here today were my first options, cho first choices. I imagined Nat as the uh, Laia, albeit Saramessa's novel, the character of Andreas is defined differently, but I always saw Hobbit thanks to Sologoyen's uh, uh, series Ante Disturbios, and when we talked about him, we talked about that. I always want to talk to with Ingrid Garcia Johnson, who I think is atomic, and I had met Hugo Silva many years ago in a town in Anso, in Huesca, and I said, we'll work together, and he said one day, he said, yeah, that's what you always say, but it seems that he plays a, a character, it's either you love or you hate in the film, and in the case of Francisco uh, Carril and Bermejo, I only see them in the theater, and I thought they were fascinating, so therefore all of them have been, it's a cast uh, that you could dream of having, and, and also the two actors in La Rioja who, are, uh, who portray the, the couple and the dog, and I love the dog, a dog, uh, female or male, I don't know, but I love Love it. Eva Cabezas, who acts as, as the vet, the Guardia Civiles, who act as Guardia Civiles, albeit they were more nervous than anyone. And, and I wanted to say that the truth is when each actor transforms into the, the character, the role of a director is to relax and enjoy it and to push them along those lines, and that's it. I'm not too sure any of the actors would like to say anything about the process of the film and how they worked. Oh, we had a good time. That would be summarized. We, were, we felt comfortable. Hi, good morning, congratulations for the film. To all of you, um, I would like to ask the, the physical difference between Koik and Leia is quite obviously Kovic and Leia, and on the screen you, it's clearly reflected very well. I, how did you plan the moments in which they share moments on the screen? Because he seems even much larger. There are moments, literally, that he doesn't fit into the screen, and she looks very small. How did you, how did you plan those moments? And then I'd like to take advantage to ask for something with this marvelous, which yesterday applauded, everyone applauded, which was a great relief, which is when he said, that when she says that about the nuns and the whores, I didn't read Sarah novel, whether it's in the novel, how was it included in the script, thank you. It's a phrase, that scene is not in the novel, but I've always dreamed about putting that phrase into a film all my life. And that moment where the lady who's smoking a cigarette with Nat, I said, this is the moment because she's got this obsession with nuns, which is one of my obsessions. I've not gone to a religious school. Nuns, very strange people who wear strange suits. And I've always wanted to use that phrase. The planning of the film has a format, as you can see, it's the first time I used this format. It's almost a square format. The difficulty for me was to not uh, fit Hovik into the frame, but the whole film. But that has forced me to really take care very, very sacredly the the frame and to take care of, of, of the strength and the power of what's outside the frame. But it wasn't difficult. There is a scene when he is scraping the leaks in the roof or in the ceiling and there is an explicit tribute to one of my photographers who's Diane was, and that is with the giant and the parents uh, because I was fitting it there and I said it's the giant and the parents uh, it's a film but no it wasn't especially difficult to shoot those scenes thank you the truth is the film I thought was quite gratifying because even though it plays it makes you feel Feel uncomfortable all the time, but also with a certain charm, and I think the technical and the artistic, it's one of the factors is the cast, and taking advantage that most of the cast is here,
I'd like to know what has been the challenge for the most of you, perhaps not so much for Leia, but in the sense, because the, the challenge of getting into those people that you hate, for example, characters, Luis and uh, Hobbik, who were characters that were very difficult to get into the vision, who's so sexist or so out of it with nuances, obviously. But I'd like to know what has been the challenges to get into those characters, which are very difficult to deal with. No, there are many like that. Uh, don't believe me. Thank you. For me, the challenge was to put in the cruelty that this guy has, and I imagine I have as well. No, you're a good guy, Luis. No, I think we've all, all of us, we've all got a, we've got a cruel side, a kind side, and also a cruel side, and full of darknesses. Uh, shadows, shall we say, and that was the challenge, basically. I wanted to, first of all, they give me this opportunity, which with this face, obviously, uh, this halo of kindness that characterizes me, they never give me the possibility of, of, of portraying a man or a guy with these characteristics. I want to thank very much that, that you gave me this possibility. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, uh, Isabel and the rest of the crew and um, and cast, uh, I basically wanted to play the right way in order to be that shadow and that cruelty that I had to portray. I'm not too sure whether I've answered your question or not. I don't see that Andreas's character is bad at all. I think it's the most honest. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. I remember, like, when Laia says there are a lot, I'm not going to get involved in Hugo's or Francesco's or Bermejo's character, but Andreas, with a few brushstrokes, but he's not very different of me. Jovic. No, no. Yes, 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 I know what you're saying, but Andreas is a guy different to Nat. He has chosen that town. He's got 100 square meters of his, he's got his orchard and his bloody house, and that's where he lives. And it's all very clear for him. And he's gone through whatever he's gone through. He's had a, a horrible childhood. He's seen his mother suffer so that he can have a future. And he needs very little. He doesn't bother anyone, and he doesn't want to be bothered. That's it, full stop. You might like him more or less, in the surroundings, there are prostitutes, there are women in the, in the street, there's the girl in the store, there's the women, there's all women, but Nat turns up. That, for whatever reason, makes him feel something. Not only a, a leak, but he make, makes he, she makes him feel something. And he's not a guy that's very good in expressing himself. Well, he ends up saying the horrible thing, or let's see if you let me get inside you for, for a moment. Hi, how are you, so to speak? But the guy, as a guy, is a guy, absolutely consequent and honest. And he doesn't get involved with anyone, bother anyone, but Nat gets him out of his place. And what ends up happening is this guy shows his inside in one moment of the film. Only one moment. But I don't see him to be a bad guy or a good guy. I think he's just a guy who just lives his life. And he doesn't want to be bothered, and he tries to not bother anyone. That's my opinion. I'll tell you later when you see the film. When I see the film, I think that evil is Peter is evil, <laughs> and the couple in the chalet in the in the chateau. Okay, they're the bad. They're the evil people. That, it is for me. Well, okay. You say you know that very well. I think my my uh, character is horrible. If I knew my character or met my character, it would be horrible to meet him. But, and then on the other hand, it's so much fun to, to be a bastard like this character. It's marvelous. And the truth it has been, it's a challenge, I understand. It might seem a challenge, but sincerely, it's been very easy. Play uh, all the time, try things, a lot of freedom to be able to do so. And the truth is, I had a great time. I think it is one of the characters that I've 
most relaxed and more relaxed I've been. I've been very loose in portraying. It wasn't a challenge, it was a lot of fun. Not judging anything and to enjoy myself with this this shitty manipulator. I think that was cool. But Lady Macbeth is the character, Ingrid. I think the most complicated of working with is Aurelius. The pressure that you've got before you start to work with her because we've all seen her films and her career and for me she's a super heroine and to be at, to make the grade from what you think she's going to ask of you I remember the months before there's a lot of pressure plus it's a no, knowing it's a novel that people have read that people have got an idea of it in their head I said how do you feel there's a lot of you feel a lot of responsibility but when we got on set everything changed because Isabel has a lightness and calm and she's very self-assured when she works which is conveyed and it's it's like we, we, we took in we were working we were having playing and having a good time and there's been a film which was easy which when beforehand it seems that a vil, it was going to be a film was very complicating the shoot was fantastic everything went well I must say the most the toughest thing for, for me was preparing at home that I wanted to die really and then everything was very easy. I would like to add that it's been very, it's the first time I've worked with, with a director, as Bill said, who op, she holds the camera and she's the camera person, so therefore to feel that she was with us, right on us, really seeing the film at the same time as it was being made. It's a beautiful feeling. And also, I would like to highlight that that feeling of, of the care during the shoot and respect and calm and patience of noticing and feeling that someone is looking at you with a lot of kindness and it's something quite obvious but I've lived it in a very powerfully in this shoot and, and it's been very beautiful because it allows you to work in a very open way and to be a and I think an actor or an actress whose tense can't work. And for me, it's very beautiful to experience that calm and that, that look that she has. And Laia, and Laia, who at the end of the day, who takes the burden of the film on the shoulder, she's a marvelous companion. I don't know, it was, it's easy to work with her as well, but she sets the tone of the film and She's got no problem in adapting and changing, and in that sense, every, we all went a walk around her, and she's the one that makes that this cast be very good, because the, the full weight of the film is on her. Without her, it's, it's a, you, you've got to look at her, the rest of the things just work out. It's very difficult to do things poorly. When you like something and you like the actors, it's very difficult. And Jordi Azategui, who's the editor of the film, it's very difficult to to cut out marvelous scenes that they had. For example, they had there's a scene of Ingrid and then a scene with Ingrid who says, and she is pregnant against her. Well, of course. What am I saying? That you're not going to have kids. No, you're not even thinking of having kids. And she said that with a look in her face. I said, what a bitch. And there's another scene with Francesca when she was telling her about her, pro her problems in a coach company called Our Coach, which is for all of those things about coaches of which I'm totally against. But it was difficult to cut out those scenes. But at the end, you've got to sacrifice things. That's for the spin-off, perhaps, exactly. I would just like to add the truth. There has been a beautiful shoot where the team has taken care of us very much. We were with the rest of the team from morning till the evening, and my colleagues had these satellite characters that are most complicated to sustain and to contain throughout the full shoot when they come and shoot and, and leave again. So therefore, I think the whole cast has maintained the cast set up by Isabel to be in the right place, and all of them to be on the same page or on the same wavelength and everything flowed strangely easy because I don't believe that the film at all is, is, is easy at all to make but albeit the film 
puñetazo en el estómago. It's a, like a punch in the stomach, but to shoot it for us has been a true work of love and pleasure for us all. I know this doesn't sell. We've got to create some sort of conflict, otherwise we can't sell anything. As we have got, we've got to create something. We haven't got ternera, but no, no, because we won't get any headlines. It's not important. Unbearable. You're unbearable. You're Isabel. You're unbearable. And something with that Catalan accent, the way you, I can't bear the way you direct or your accent or anything. She's a horrible director. I've never seen any of your films, and I'm going to see him again. How's that? And let's leave. How's that for a headline? Because this is boring. This sells, this sells. Well done, well said. Toxic, don't be so toxic. Before we go, we've got time for another final question. Well, I want to thank you very much because I love the film. You're all, all of you are great in it. And Isabel Coixet, first of all. But the, the dog, that hermaphrodite dog, please. Or everything that's related to the, 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 the dog one way or another. And I'd like to know whether Leia, who I imagine the relationship with the dog, to that animal, which feels, it's real love, and he's so shit. How was that process? And the final dance, that's true. Well, the dog, we did a dog casting, and, and Flor, his name is, the dog's name is Flor, and he looked at me with that little face. Why me? And I, and, and I fell in love with the dog at the end of the day. And then it turns out the caretakers, they said, well, you know, it's a dog that's an hermaphrodite. I said, are there dogs that are hermaphrodites? I didn't know that. And we put it into the film, put him into the film. Well, we, it's not we look looking for a dog. Like I didn't even know that they, these types of dogs existed, but the dog were, had its things. A couple of things, but it's very funny how the other dogs would come along and looked at him very strangely. So another outsider, shall we say, in this jungle of outsiders in the film. Yes, I think it's very interesting to shoot with animals because all of a sudden you've got a... And it's his first film, Flor's first film, the dog, that is to say. So I think she has a certain dignity that it's very good for the character. I personally, I saw her as an, an alter ego, like a mirror. The title is Un Amor. Everyone, as we said before, we find the explanations and draws conclusions of where that love is Uh, where you place it. I think the dog is uh, the love of uh, this film in many different ways. And the truth is that there were moments that were very magical that didn't get, get into the final cut, but, but there were very beautiful moments with Flor who, who were playing in favor of the narrative completely. I hope that w the film would have lasted three and a half hours, but I don't think we couldn't do that, obviously. But it was very beautiful working to see how Flor integrated the uh, the dog integrated into the film. So, okay, thank you very much for your answers. <laughs> you've been un amor, you've been a love. Um, so a great round of applause for the director, the producers and the cast. Thank you.